Do, 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 do. Okay, hi everyone. Today we're gonna go over tech packs. And no, it's not going to be all in this video because tech packs are complicated and detailed and require a lot of explanation. So this series is going to run like my design process series. In this video, I'm gonna go over the overview. I'm gonna go over the overview. I'm going to go over all the separate elements that go into a tech pack. I'm going to list them off and briefly describe them. And then in the subsequent tech pack videos, I'm going to go over each section in greater detail. Some of the sections are super easy and easy to explain. So I'm just going to lump them in one video, but there are some where it gets kind of complicated. You know me, I like to be thorough. The first thing you need for excellent tech packs are really good flats. Not the beautiful, expressive, dreamy, beautiful line quality flats, but really clear, really explicit, detailed, easy to read flats. Okay, these are product development flats, not pretty presentation flats. And I have several videos on how to do flats and I will drop the links in the info box. I have some where I talk about flats drawn by hand and some uh, videos where I start talking about flats in Adobe Illustrator. For your tech packs, you need to be drawing your flats in Adobe Illustrator. However, my videos on how to draw flats by hand are things that apply to all flats. So you should start there. Okay, you should watch the hand-drawn flats videos and apply that knowledge to your Illustrator flats. I also have a video on pattern cards and you know, as a designer, you should know how to fill out a pattern card and how to read a pattern card, but not all companies include pattern cards in their tech packs. There's no rhyme or reason. Some people do, some people don't. Okay, I've seen it both ways. What is a tech pack? technical package, specifications package. Some people call it a tech pack, some people call it a spec pack, whatever, it's the same thing. Okay. It is a packet of information, okay, several sheets, and it has all the itty bitty down to the last stitch detail on how a garment was developed and how to recreate that garment in the future. The first page should be your lead sheet. And some people call it a description sheet or the sketch sheet. Basically, it is has the big flats, front, back, and if necessary, a side view. Some, some garments are so complicated, they need a left and right flat. And this is always going to be your first page, okay? Doesn't matter what this tech pack is for if you don't know what garment it is for. Number two, your specification measurement sheet you are going to measure the ever-loving crap out of your garment and write all those numbers down. You know when you shop online and you're looking at, let's say, just a t-shirt and you want to know what size you should order and so you look at their size guide and it says bust is this, waist is this, and hip is this, and so you can get a basic idea for how it's going to fit you, right? Yeah, when you are doing your specifications measurement sheet, you're going to measure like, oh, 20 more things than that. You're going to measure the collar, okay? How deep it sits, how deep the neckline sits on the chest, okay? How wide it is, all right? The circumference, how wide your shoulder is, how long the sleeve is, okay? How long the t-shirt is at center back, at high shoulder point, okay? Bust, waist, hip, sure, okay, circumference of the bicep for your sleeve measurement, okay, so many things. You're going to measure the stinking crap out of your garment, every little thing, okay, and you're going to write all that down, and you're going to write them all down for your sample size, okay. Your sample size should be the middle size of your size range, so you can do, you know, X, you know, extra small to extra large, or you could do zero to 12 or whatever size range you're doing, the middle one should be your sample size. Okay. 
okay? And then you're going to mark that, our sample size is a size four, size six, whatever, and then you're gonna give the measurements for each of those. Because obviously, those numbers are gonna be different as you start making bigger sizes and smaller sizes of that same garment. You're also gonna have a construction details sheet. Pictures worth a thousand words, and so you're going to provide drawings, you know, blown up detail sketches of different elements of more difficult construction, okay? If something is really, you know, really standard, like, oh, you know, cover stitch hem, like you don't need to include that. But if you have a really special hem, like you're adding some trim and it's got special top stitching or decorative stitching, then you want to pop that into like a little close up of that in your construction detail sheet. And you know, some garments are super detailed and so you're going to need several pages of this. You know those windbreakers that you see in sporting goods shops where it's got all these toggles and pulls and little zippers and like their lining it has like extra pockets with another mesh panel and then you've got like a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket here two pockets here and then you have like a zip off like bottom part like you know those kinds of really complicated garments they might have several construction detail sheets okay because all those things need to be clarified remember when you are putting together your tech pack, the goal is that the details are all there so that you can make as few samples as possible. Okay? Hardly anyone is going to get it right on the first try. Okay, You're not going to be like, okay, here's my tech pack, make my sample, and then everything is beautiful and perfect, and you can just use that as your final sample. That's really not how it's going to go, but the fewer prototypes you make because you're really clarifying all the details and everybody's on the same page, the more money you save, the more time you save, the more headaches you save. <laughs> Very important. Next, you're going to need a sample approval and tracking sheet. I say next. I don't mean that these all have to be in the order that I list them, okay? You're going to figure out an order that works for you guys, but so your sample approval and tracking sheet. This shit is tedious, okay? This is one of those things that you use a very good assistant for. It's like every time a sample comes in, you need to mark that you received it from the factory and what date. And every time you send something out to get worked on, you need to write down the date you sent it out and to who you to whom? Who? I don't know. I don't really know the difference between whom and who, okay? You need to, you know, when did it leave your office and where did it go? When did it come back? When did the second prototype come back? When did that get approved? You need a timeline, you need to keep track of all your samples. You should consider your sample like a bag of money, like a bag of time and money. And so if you care about your time and money, you better track that shit, bill of materials. That is the master list of all the things that are going in your garment the descriptions of all the things that are going into your garment, placement, quantities, and sources. All right, so let's say you have a basic shirt, so you're gonna list your fabric, you're gonna list any contrast, you're going to list all the buttons, you're going to list, well, just make a note of where the buttons go. They're gonna go down your center front. They're gonna be two on the cuff, you know, one on the placket, and is it a button down or a button up? So you're gonna have little buttons on the corners of the collars if it's a button down. And you're like, Zoe, what the hell is the difference between a button up and a button down? A button up is a shirt that you button in the front. It's got a collar, it's got sleeves, it's got cuff, placket, whatever, right? That's a button up. And no, it has no, like, it's not telling you that you have to button your buttons up, okay? You can button any direction. You could start in the middle, doesn't matter, okay? A button down shirt has little buttons in the corner of your collar, your collar points, and your collar points are buttoned down to your shirt. Button downs are typically a more casual look and done in more casual fabrics. Okay, as a quick aside. So in your bill of materials, you're, you will mark, you know, the button, a description of the button, and where the buttons go 
on the garment and then where you bought them, like where they're coming from. And then you're gonna have your colorways sheet. This lists all the things from your bill of materials, but then groups them by color. And you know this from shopping, you go to a place and most garments come in multiple colorways. You go to a t-shirt store and they come in black, white, gray. You go to something like J. Crew and they'll offer the same t-shirt in like 12 different colors. Okay. So if you have a blue shirt, you're going to list all the things that the blue version of that shirt needs. Okay. Does it need blue thread? Does it need blue buttons? Does it need blue thread? You know, whatever. Okay. And then the purple version of that same shirt. Okay. Is it going to need purple buttons? Is it going to need red buttons? Whatever. Even if all the different colors of shirt get the same exact button in the same color and everything, you need to put that. Okay. Blue, purple, black, green, all the same button. Okay. To clarify that. Next will be your counter sample spec sheet. This is basically a continuation of your sample spec sheet. And you're like, Zoe, do we really need to keep measuring, double checking, finessing and measuring again? My answer is, I don't know. Is fit a priority for your company? Next is your grade rule. What is a grade? Grading is not like A, B, C, D, grading in school. Grading in garment production is the process in which you make sizes bigger or smaller from your sample to get a complete size range. Okay. Someone asked me to make a grading video once and I can't because I have like almost zero experience grading patterns. Okay. Uh, I've almost always sent out my patterns to get graded by a professional grader. So if you're in design school and you want to be a designer, it is not necessary for you to learn technically how to grade everything, but you need to know the basics and you need to know how to develop a grade rule. A grade rule shows how much bigger each measurement of your garment it gets to make the next size. So let's say your sample size is a medium and you have all the measurements for the medium. Center front is this long, center back is this long, uh, the sleeve is this long, the cuff is this wide. You have all those measurements, right? The next column over, you're gonna have how much bigger it gets. Like, oh, center back is going to be half an inch longer in the large than the medium. And your bust is going to be an inch wider than it was in the medium, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone has a different grade rule. You've seen enough of those size guides to know that, you know, everyone's sizing is a little bit different. Don't get me started on sizing, like labeling issues in the garment industry. I could talk for like five hours on that, but you do know that the sizes all run differently company to company. So you need to create a grade rule where, yeah, our large is this much bigger than a medium. Then our large sleeve is this much longer than a medium sleeve. And that's your grade rule. And then you're going to have a fabric info sheet, which has info on the fabric. <laughs> so, you know, where, what it's made out of. Fiber content is always important. Check your clothes. You should have a fiber content label somewhere, you know, 90% polyester, 10% elastane or whatever. And then uh, where it's from, you know, the country and also the company and how wide it is. And we went over the importance of width in the pattern card video, uh, prices, lead times, care instructions. Uh, <laughs> if you watched my design process series, you guys know that my least favorite thing in designing is wash tests. Oh my God, I hate wash tests. So tedious, right? But you need to have care instructions, okay? Because you need to label that in your clothes so that people can take care of your clothes. And then you're gonna have your trim info sheet, which is an info sheet on trims. It's gonna be the same thing as your fabric info sheet, but for your trims, just keep those things separate. So those are the elements that go into a tech pack. Stay tuned for detailed videos on how to fill out each of these parts. 
and what these forms look like. And I will be uh, selling templates of all these forms in my Etsy shop as we go along because yeah, you're, you're welcome to make your own, of course, or you can get the vendor compliance handbook that I mentioned in my fashion books video. This one has a lot of templates for what you need, and it's a really awesome book. Nobody paid me to talk about this book at all whatsoever. It's just something that I've had in my library and that I have found really helpful for me. So you can pick a copy of this up. I got mine at fashiondex.com. That's the publisher, and that's it. You guys know the drill. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe. Check the info box if you have any questions. If your answer is not there, drop me a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.